Thank you for joining us for this online Christmas Eve service tonight. I trust that you've enjoyed singing many of the old familiar Christmas carols before uh, coming to this video now of my message. As we celebrate this Christmas season during a pandemic, there are many words that come to my mind. Uh, fear, anxiety, grief, loneliness, despair, weariness, disappointment, impoverishment, and depression. Uh, all of those words I think uh, many of us are familiar with. We've felt many of those uh, emotions together over these last nine months. Uh, there's been the fear of potentially catching the COVID virus and possibly dying from it. That's where some of the grief comes in because I know uh, some of us have lost uh, family members or friends due to the COVID-19 uh, virus. There's been anxiety because many people have been laid off from their jobs and so that steady source of income has been interrupted. Uh, there's been loneliness due to the isolation and the inability to connect personally uh, with family and friends and neighbors. We've had to um, live with one another at, at a distance at this point. And there's been weariness. It's just gone on and on and on for nine months now. And uh, until these vaccines become readily available, this weariness will probably continue for a few more months. There's been disappointment from canceled activities I know my wife and I uh, really enjoy the Christmas season, in particular my wife, and we had to cancel our Christmas open house that we have for our church family and friends. Uh, here at the church, we've had to cancel a number of activities that normally take place this time of year, one of which is our um, progressive dinner and white elephant gift exchange, which is always a, a lot of fun and adds a, a lot of joy to the season. But I know there's been disappointment for many of you as well. Uh, many of the children have had to uh, remain learning uh, remotely online, and so they haven't been able to gather with their friends at school, and uh, it's been difficult. So there's been a lot of disappointments. Uh, for some, this pandemic has led to impoverishment. As I mentioned, they've lost their job and um, food, uh, to putting food on the table has been difficult. We've seen on the news long lines at food banks and so forth, and the ability to pay utility bills and rent. Uh, many people are potentially facing eviction when this pandemic is over. And all of that uh, together combines to uh, just lead to some depression. So I know uh, I felt many of these emotions and I'm sure you have as well. Uh, this Christmas is very different from past Christmases, which I remember uh, as so much more joyful and idyllic. But my encouragement to you tonight is to rejoice anyway. How can I say that? Because the very first Christmas was full of all those emotions and feelings as well. Think with me about the events surrounding the very first Christmas. It was far from perfect. Uh, the Jews were living under Roman occupation at the time. Uh, they were uh, facing severe, a, a severe tax burden from the Romans and they just did not have the freedom uh, to govern themselves and to rule themselves as they would have liked. And it's in the midst of that context that Mary, a poor, uh, engaged, teenager in a small village called Nazareth is visited by Gabriel the angel and told that she would be the one who would bear the long-awaited Christ child who would give birth to the long-awaited Messiah and after uh, a few uh, simple questions of the angel she was willing to submit to that but remember she was engaged she wasn't yet married and here she is becoming pregnant and uh, her fiance Joseph learns of this pregnancy and he decides to divorce her quietly. Under the law of Moses, he actually had the right to have her stoned to death, but he decides to rejoice her, uh, to uh, divorce her quietly. And uh, he's proceeding with that plan until an angel appears to him and reveals to him uh, the truth that Mary was actually pregnant by the Holy Spirit and she was bearing the Christ child. But imagine the scandal that they had to live with in that small community. Even if they tried to explain it, that Mary was bearing the Christ child, that she was uh, impregnated by the Holy Spirit, 
uh, that would be difficult for people to comprehend and understand and would probably lead to many raised eyebrows. And then in her ninth month of pregnancy, Joseph and Mary have to travel uh, from Nazareth to Bethlehem because of a census. This would not have been a very easy journey. And when they arrive at a relative's home in Bethlehem, there's no guest room available for them. Other relatives have already occupied the guest rooms, and so the only place for them is uh, in the house where the animals were kept. And when the baby is born, then his crib is a manger. And then how about what happened after Jesus' birth? King Herod, having learned that a potential rival for the throne had been born, began to search for him and in an effort to kill him. Joseph and Mary had to take their newborn son and they had to flee for their lives. Can you imagine how, how it must have felt uh, to have someone trying to kill your newborn baby son? Especially if that person had all the power and authority of an absolute monarchy behind them. It must have been terrifying. And uh, how could they you know, possibly defend themselves? Where could they hide? They couldn't, all they could do was run. And that's what they did. They made it out of Bethlehem one step ahead of Herod's soldiers. And so Mary and Joseph were unable to return to their home and family even after the birth, but they had to flee to a foreign country until uh, Herod's death. And while they were hiding in Egypt, Herod's, uh, Herod's soldiers were going throughout the, uh, the city of Bethlehem and the countryside there killing all the baby boys. That's not a very heartwarming Christmas story, is it? Our romanticized, idyllic, perfect ideas about the first Christmas are misplaced. That kind of Christmas never existed, and God never intended that it should. In other words, the kind of Christmas we've got, a flawed, stressful uh, one combined with joy and sadness and with hope and fear all mixed together, this is what Christmas is all about. It's what Christmas has been about since the very beginning. And in fact, this is what life is about and we will be about until Christ returns. Because the kind of purity and simplicity and joy that we long for without any sin or sorrow or suffering is not for this world. That's for the world to come. What we have now and what God intends for us to rejoice in the midst of is imperfection. Peace and stress mingle together, work and rest, joy and sorrow, confidence and confusion, but we don't have to let the imperfections of the Christmas season keep us from genuinely enjoying it. We shouldn't allow sadness and suffering to keep us from genu genuinely rejoicing in Christ our Savior at every season of the year. In spite of all the pain and sorrow and work and struggle and fear and confusion that accompanied it, the Bible still portrays the birth of Jesus as an occasion for great joy. When the angel appeared to the shepherds, in, uh, as recorded in Luke chapter 2, verses 10 and 11, the angel said, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you, and he is Christ the Lord. The same is true for us. God wants us to rejoice in the birth of his Son, and we can rejoice even though our circumstances may be far from perfect. We may be fearful, exhausted, depressed, and worn out from all the pandemic news and restrictions, but we can still rejoice in the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He came to earth as fully God and fully human and bore our sins on the cross, securing forgiveness from God and abundant and eternal life for those who put their faith and trust in him. There has never been a perfect Christmas, not even the very first one, but that shouldn't keep us from rejoicing along with the shepherds and the wise men and Mary and Joseph and all of God's children. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ, if you have confessed your sins and trusted in, in his death as payment for sin, then you have all the reason in the world to rejoice this Christmas, regardless of your circumstances. Due to your faith and trust in Christ, you are a beneficiary of an abundant life now and eternal life hereafter. 
There is no such thing as a perfect Christmas, and there never has been. But we do have a perfect Savior, and we can rejoice in that. If you haven't yet placed your faith and trust in Christ, then what better time to do it than during this Christmas season as we celebrate Jesus' birth once again? Won't you do that now? Make this the best Christmas you'll ever have by putting your faith and trust in Christ. It's a simple thing to do. In prayer, tell Jesus you're sorry for your sins and that you believe he died on the cross for your sins. Tell him from this day forward that you're going to surrender control of your life to him and to live in obedience to his commands from now on. When you do that, an amazing thing happens. God sends his Holy Spirit to come and to dwell within you and to empower you to change so that your thoughts and your attitudes and your actions become more and more like Jesus. Times may be difficult right now, but we have a perfect Savior who continues to reign and rule, and we are called to rejoice and trust in him. I pray that in spite of all the uh, stressful circumstances around you, that you will rejoice in remembering the birth of Jesus, your Savior. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we do acknowledge the fact that this has been a tough year and uh, that we have all experienced a range of emotions from, from uh, anxiety and fear and grief to loneliness and depression and impoverishment. But in spite of all of those things, Lord, we know uh, that we have a Savior. You sent Jesus to die in our place on the cross to bear our sin so that we who put our faith and trust in him can be forgiven and know abundant life now and eternal life hereafter. And so we rejoice in that. We do not have perfect circumstances, but we have a perfect Savior. And we are so grateful that you sent Jesus into the world. Help us to trust in him and to look to him and lean upon him as we go through the days ahead. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen.